Now, a GIS lets you see context and content. Context, like seeing the whole, and also patterns, linkages, trends in the data, in the phenomena, in the uh, issue that you're examining. Also, uh, content, though, um, location and place. You know, what's it like there? What is the watershed like? What's the what's the sense of place like? Uh, the community, the neighborhood, the ecoregion, the census tract, whatever it happens to be. Uh, maybe a combination of those things. So here's an example from you know a, a typical you know plate tectonics, uh, natural hazards, Western North America, um, USA and Canada analysis of the spatial pattern of a certain um, time period uh, of earthquakes. And so here we see that you know we've got a pattern here, and it's related to the plate boundaries. We've got a lot of earthquakes that are away from the plate boundaries, but we have a lot that are are near the plate boundary. So what does that mean? What does that tell us? <clears throat> now the second skill I'd like you to think about is the ability to work with data. Now there's a lot of discussion these days about uh, big data, right? We've got a lot of data in our world. It's, it's increasingly fine-grained. It is increasingly uh, touching on personal privacy. You know, so there are related issues there that we should have a discussion about and I want geographers to be on that ground floor of those discussions. Um, but the ability to work with data Data is changing, data is rich, data is imperfect but very useful. There are data quality issues. Don't just accept it because it's a map, right? Don't just accept it because it's on the internet. Don't just accept it because it's a, a list of statistics, right? Be critical of the data, but know how to work with it. Know its benefits, know its limitations. Develop those critical thinking skills. Again, be critical of the data. Understand metadata. Uh, understand where it comes from, who produces it, why it's oftentimes missing. So, in other words, knowing how to find, assess, and manage data is very important. Now, what about this ooh part that I have in this slide? Well, what about new sensors? Citizen science. Citizens as sensors. So, there are more and more satellites. Right? There are more and more people that are able to collect data. So, it's no longer just the agencies where I personally used to work. U.S. Census Bureau, NOAA, USGS were the three major federal agencies where I worked. But it's increasingly everyday citizens, right? Um, it's not just government agencies, international, th the World Health Organization, the United Nations Environment Program, the U.S. Um, uh, FEMA, uh, for example, local governments, state governments, academia, uh, private companies collecting data. It's actually y'all, all y'all, right? It is us collecting data, right, as citizens, citizen science or volunteer geographic information. So being able to grapple with all these incoming newfound sources of information in increasingly rich ways. Uh, in the old days, it was sort of like, well, there were such few sources of geospatial information. It was sort of you constructed sometimes your problem about around where the data is located. And so you're gathering data. Nowadays, it's more of a, I want to filter the data that's already out there because there's so much data. Okay? So we've gone from a, you know, gather, gather, gather to you know, I've got enough here, thank you very much. I need to filter out and just pick what I need. So, for example, we want to make a map of uh, a quick map showing, you know, uncovering some patterns, some patterns of uh, median age in a community. So we can do that. We can be critical of the data. We can look at the patterns as they uh, are displayed by region, by state, by census tract, by block group. Now the third skill I believe is understanding geographic foundations and this is probably more of what you'd expect me to say. Yeah, Joseph's going to talk about uh, projections and datums and topology, spatial relationships, spatial data models, raster and vector, uh, database theory, how to classify data, how to display it in cart uh, you know, cartographically good sense, uh, geoprocessing methods, uh, field methods, how do I gather data, uh, whether it's with a probe or with uh, interviews, house to house, uh, that sort of thing. How do I do all that stuff and how do I understand those geographic foundations? And there's lots more that we could list here, right? So. Um, lots of good geographic foundations here. That's the third skill that I believe is important. So, you know, for example, to make sense of a map like this, and we're going back to the earthquake example. Well, I need to know something about plate tectonics. If I'm going to analyze a problem with plate tectonics and earthquakes and volcanoes, the, the spatial pattern of these things. And then also, in this case, I need to know uh, something about uh, uh, demographics of different countries, right? We've got uh, different um, risk assessment 
based on uh, median income or based on the age, uh, the median age of different countries, or based on the, in terms of physical geography, the soils, the, the substrate, right, that could be shaken in an earthquake, liquefaction zones, and so on and so forth. So I've got, I've got a population kind of human geography component here, and I've also got a physical geography component here. So um, those are the foundations. If I'm going to try to make sense of this map, these maps are just uh, dots, right? They're, they're points, lines, and polygons, and rasters. So uh, this is the tool that's most important to cultivate, right? Not necessarily the, the tool here of, of, uh, of uh, GIS skills, per se. So it's the geographic foundations that you're making sense of um, with, through, through various courses that you've taken through uh, background, through uh, part of your experience here on living on the planet. Another skill um, that I think is important enough to be in the top five is this whole idea of adaptability. So you've got different um, ways of uh, dealing with information, right? But all of these are, are changing. The, the platforms are changing, desktop, mobile, cloud, right? In the old days, we just had desktop GIS. In fact, before desktop, laptop computers and tablets, we had, we had GIS on, on PCs and before that, mini computers and before that on mainframes. So, so that desktop or physical, you know, computer in front of me platform uh, has changed. But also we've got, you know, the whole idea of collecting data with mobile devices has changed from very high, you know, specialized, expensive devices to ordinary uh, smartphones. Right. Uh, also, um, we've got this whole cloud-based environment. We can actually put data up there. We can take data down from the cloud. We can interact with with GIS on the cloud in in, in the ways that we've, you know, in some ways it's similar to other um, software as a service models that you've used. GIS is no different in in that sense. From I mean, look at music. You've got some music locally on your own device in front of you, computer. Uh, phone, etc. But you've got streaming music, right? You've also got files and, you know, of various kinds on your local computer, but you've also got files in Dropbox or Box.com or uh, Google Drive, uh, you know, SkyDrive, etc. So you've got a combination. Same with GIS. You've got some local data, you've got some data in the cloud. Um, lots of other tools. Uh, Salesforce.com, completely cloud-based solution for uh, managing customers and so on and so forth. Right, you've got uh, images, some images on your local device, on your camera, on your phone, on your computer, but you've also got uh, data uh, up in there, you know, in terms of photos and images on, um, you know, Photo Bucket and Picasso Web, Google Plus, Flickr, etc. Right, so think of it that way. The GIS has evolved into some of a similar kind of uh, environment that other technologies. Uh, have evolved into, and I think that's good for GIS because it's no longer just this specialized thing that uh, is sort of separate from the rest of IT. It's actually integrated with with trends in IT. Another thing that you need to be adaptable about is that as the platforms have changed, and some of these other things that we'll talk about, the audience for GIS has expanded and, and changed as well. So no longer it's just is it just your colleagues that are uh, using GIS, but it's also uh, the decision makers of various kinds, right? And it could be the general public increasingly these days, and it could be people that interact with your data halfway around the world that speak a different language than you do, and you know, and they have a different cultural background, and then how are they gonna make sense of what you're talking about? You know, so there's all that audience communication, uh, which, you know, incorp incorporates uh, cartography to be sure, but also uh, HTML and, and uh, JavaScript and um, ways to communicate uh, video, etc. that your results to the to the planet. Um, and also GIS functionality has changed and expanded too over the years, right? In fact, the last, I'd say the last three years in GIS have, have I've seen more changes than in the past, you know, maybe 15 years before that. It's really accelerated. Um, and I think for the better. Uh, GIS is no longer this clunky sort of, uh, you know, really, really cool stuff. It was always cool stuff and really fascinating and really useful, but it was clunky for a while and, and very difficult to use and, you know, slow learning curve and steep learning curve. And now it's easier to use, more powerful, and getting more and more that way all the time. Now that that presents its, that those opportunities present challenges too, namely right here, You've got your audience changing and expanding, so you've got different things to think about there. You've got a lot of different ways to communicate like you didn't before. I mean, old, in the old days, it was sort of, you know, make your map, plot it on a plotter, and, you know, put it in a book or a publication or on a wall somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. Put it in a report. But now you've got, you know, all multimedia. Uh, sky's the limit in terms of how you can communicate your results. You know, you can write it into a blog. You can, you know, make a video, right? You can make a story map. You can... Uh, 
um, make an animation of your data, 2D, 3D. You can plot some of this stuff on a, on a 3D printer. I mean, you know, there's lots of ways you can uh, you can communicate what you're doing. Also, I'd like you to think about uh, just embracing change as part of this whole adaptability model. You're embracing change. You're you're showing that you can, you know, potential employers in the future that you, yeah, you can roll with the changes, right? Uh, REO Speedwagon, hey, keep on rolling. Uh, anyway, the point is, is that you're embracing change. You say that I'm a flexible human being. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got my knees bent. I can. Um, take on new challenges but also I can learn new skills new software sets new data learn how to deal with new data formats uh, I'm a lifelong learner uh, is what the uh, last uh, bullet there is indicating so you're adaptable I think this is a super important is skill especially as we move forward into the future so here's a an example of a uh, uh, a analysis that I did on sustainable tea cultivation cultivation in Kenya um, where are the best sites to locate new tea farms in Kenya? Looking at uh, soil type, altitude, distance to market, uh, transportation networks, uh, accessibility to water, and so on and so forth. So this is this is one way of uh, doing the analysis, sure. But you've got to be adaptable about where am I going to get the data? How am I going to display it? Now, once it's in this map in my GIS, how do I get it out there so that other people can consume it and use it? Okay.